Hello magpies, and welcome. Drum roll, please, it's time for the finale of the Social Justice Player's Handbook. We have covered good, we have covered bad, we have covered neutral, and now, now it's time to descend into ultimate evil. It is time for the final boss, for the arch-villain to emerge. The scene unfolds into the yawning moor of dungeons deep. The tomb opens in a raspy gasp of fetid reek. The rot of ages rushes over, clings and brings a mist of missing souls. Upon the olden corridor, a silhouette creeps over creaking boards and peaks to unsheathing swords. Behold, the villain comes, as it was ere he came before. Are you ready for the plot twist, little magpies? Have you been counting? Have you guessed already the identity of the arch-villain, the great enemy of the social justice adventurers, and the archetype that threatens the sanctity of their quest is, in fact, None other than the Paladin. Kinda. Except that there's another plot twist. You see, Paladins don't exist. And outside of an obscure medieval etymology, they have never existed at all. And furthermore, they will never exist. Let me explain. The spectre of the paladin hangs over all those who fight for social justice like a carnival mirror and the sword of Damocles at once. It stands as a condemnation of their failure to live up to perfection. For after all, is not the dream of a better world a contract with idealism? The trouble is that no one can ever be that good, that righteous, or that perfect, and that's okay. Our devotion falters from time to time, and the despair and the disillusionment that this brings are essential moments in our journeys of self-discovery. We laugh at inappropriate things at inappropriate times, and more often than not, we say and we do the wrong things. How else could we learn? If there is a point to this whole series, it's that heroes are just regular people. But if we were all paladins, if we were all paragons of justice and had no flaws, there would be no such thing as heroes at all. But heroes are real, as are villains, each, is the, each in their own way. Inside us, there are two wolves. But the true villain is the paladin, however. For the real, tangible harm they cause, despite being a mere spectre over our name. Otherwise, functional heroes will doubt and punish themselves, will live in constant anxiety and become jaded and apathetic, all because they cannot raise themselves to perfection. No villain has done more for the cause of injustice than the expectation that anyone fighting for justice must necessarily be either a paladin or a hypocrite with no sunlight in between. Likewise, no one profits more from this baseless accusation than every villain on the planet. All they need to do is find one optically bad thing in a hero's past and they can crow hypocrisy till the cows come home. You say you like good things, but one time you did a bad thing. Interesting, hmm? No one believes in cancel culture more than villains, after all. We need to take care of ourselves, and self-care for a hero means more than just a mani-pedi and a mindfulness podcast. 
We need to forgive our past mistakes and accept that we shall one day need to forgive ourselves again. We need to maintain our information hygiene to make the constant sorting of fact from fiction a process as natural as breathing. We need to, and I know you don't want to hear this, but we need to get off the internet and touch grass and feel sunshine. We need to talk to real people. We need to knock on doors, phone bank and canvas, protest, march, and write letters. We need to practice better, broader hygiene of tolerance. We must see our political projects as more than our friend groups. We cannot cut ourselves off to potential allies just because of drama. We cannot condemn mistakes without the opportunity for atonement. Or cut people off for the optics of their arguing in good faith the idea that the ideas that villains only pretend to care about in bad faith. We become villains in our own right when we preach a big society but refuse to fight for the rights of our opponents, or refuse to engage with majorities when we speak on minority issues, or when we treat any character archetype, any social media snapshot as some kind of a magic window that stares directly into a person's soul and not as it is. A passing static glimpse at a passing wave in the dynamic sea of a person's life. In the real world, no adventurer is an island. We choose our parties not just to cover our blind spots, but to challenge ourselves to do better. If we were all social justice warriors, we couldn't even touch sorcerers. Our bodies would be fuel for necromancers, and we'd be brought down to infighting by a single well-placed assassin. We need our warriors to show us how strong we can be. We need our wizards to cast aspersions while breaking down the entire paradigm. And we need our rogues for a softer touch. We need the support of our entire rogues gallery. And most of all, we need to appreciate our clerics and read their research directly rather than learning all of our sociology from screen caps of anonymous tumble up takes. In the real world, party balance is everything. And we have to believe in that which we cannot presently see. Like the possibility for victory where it is presently unattainable. And in the good inherent somewhere buried deep down, even in villains. For if we do not believe, what are we even talking about when we evoke a better world? When we as a species stop believing in things that we don't see in a daily basis, when we stop believing that things that we don't regularly see are even possible, we are finished done as a species, and we might as well just hand over the planet to the cockroaches, because they, at least, are consistent. But it's not all doom and gloom. It cannot be all doom and gloom. Because when you look over all of history, people have achieved so much more than we think we can with so much less than we presently have. We have a global network of information. We have networking systems that let us speak with people on the other side of the planet. We have the wealth of lessons taught by history at our fingertips. And we have every reason to believe that we can win. We have everything everything except time. 
So pulling back a smidge, and we are getting maybe a little bit too real now for what was ostensibly a funny D&D meme. The games we play are never just games. And even in formal academic logic, we have a thing called the defense of nonsense. It is the practice of testing our propositions in fantastical, unreal, and absurd frames and scenarios to see if they are sound in all cases, or if we are just forcing the puzzle pieces to make the picture we want to see. To close, I will say only this. Never, ever become complacent. Never stop rolling for initiative. Thank you, magpies. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing this with me. It was a fun journey, and I'm glad you came along. If you could help me out by hitting all of the relevant like and share buttons and subscribing to the channel, it really will help me out to bring you more content, and it can only get better from here. Believe me. I love you all so very much, and swoop on.